Oh, it's yeah. cracked up yeah. there at the top. Right the, the wall's bowed out. See the whole yeah. wall's bowed out? Mm -hmm. This whole wall's bowed out. There's folks that are running around house to house, leaving their cars, their tree service cars on the doors, you know, for business. <laughs> and we're, <laughs> like that house there's got one on it. And we're running around doing them for free. <laughs> yeah, man. Good stuff. Love it. Matter of fact, we were pulling up on one yesterday and they were just walking off the house there when we were uh, fixing to uh, set up and start doing it. It left us some handles on it here. <laughs> I tell you, some folks, so they've cut pieces off this thing and there's like firewood pieces laying down in there yeah Good. It's free. Let's see where my next cut's going to be. That nose is going to be bad. End up down in a dang roof. 
or inside the house. Don't want to hit no shingles. That's bad, Juju. I'm telling you, it eats the chain up, boy. up here with the good people now y'all notice the squirrel the baby squirrel on rook's back right there he rescued the good folks. let's see that might be a limb down in I'm there a, i I'm think i'm gonna try to come over here and grab that way i can pull it like that. all right yeah that that's a long limb right there yeah i'm about to cut that one michael it's uh I don't know. Yeah.
gonna be one more video after this one from Amory till we go back up there and work some more uh, this week not planning on going up there we may end up up there later week I'm not sure it's gonna depend on the weather I mean they're talking about it raining pretty much all week this week so we'll see so we'll start here about one in the morning which about par for course I mean we're getting it every few days but those trees like that on, on the houses, they're, they're tough to deal with because 
you kind of got to support the main stem part because if you cut it and you cut it off, that main stem can fall and fall fall into the house. And that's where the mini comes in because you notice I had the whole thing holding it up, picking it up. But that, a lot of times, like when the root ball is still attached, as long as the root ball is attached, it's very important not to cut the root ball off yet. You cut the root ball off, then all the weight of the tree is on the house. And the root ball is still on it. The root ball, will, a lot of times, will hold these trees. And you'll think they're going to fall, but it'll continue to hold a tree so uh my let's see i i'm not sure how many storms i've worked but it's been a bunch all the way back into the early 90s and it's just something that i just done i mean i didn't have anybody show me i've always just kind of understood stuff with a chainsaw for some reason i, I don't know why i mean i've when I first started playing with chainsaws when I was about 12 years old, I mean, I, I, I got it, I understood it, and just kind of went with it. And uh, so the storm stuff, it is like a, like running a saw, especially in the storm stuff, is it's like a, it's like a drug to me. I mean, it just, the adrenaline drives me. I won't even eat during the day or nothing because I just I just want to go. I just want to do more. Want to do more. Want to do more. The question I get asked a lot is about the saws and why I run, why I'm running the the steel so much and everything. Well, simply, the 400 is a very light saw. It is also a very powerful saw. I saw with the eight, with the twenty five inch bar on it, full of gas and oil on weight, but eighteen pounds six ounces. That's it. So if you take a, a five sixty two, they gonna come in over twenty pounds, and that's a sixty cc saw compared to a sixty seven cc saw. I've got a video showing them all. I think it's actually about 20 and a half pounds is what that saw is. That's with a 20 inch Sugi bar on it. So I mean, I'm running 25, a lot more power. The darn 572 Husk Warner is really heavy. It's like 20, about 22 pounds or so. Well, man, I'm gonna tell you, when you, we were doing like four of these jobs a day, every day, I mean, these these trees that we're doing, man, I mean, if you're pricing these things, I mean, you're looking at a, all these jobs, five to $7,000 per tree that we were, you know, doing for free. Well, if you're running a heavier saw, the fatigue, it gives you out. And, you know, sometimes it's better not to try to be a man. You know what I mean? Just try to do all you can do in a day. Quit trying to be this big macho and that's what a lot of times people are with saws. They're like, you know, bigger is better. I mean, sure, it's fun to fire the, the 395 up or a 592, but you ain't going to run it very, very long. I don't care how strong, how tough, how bad you are, or 661. You just you ain't going to run them very long. I mean, you're going, the fatigue is going to set in pretty quick. Your arm's going to turn into rubber. And that's another thing. If you're running in the lift up in the air, your, all your cuts are over your head. Everything's over your head. You're reaching for everything. And I had somebody, I've taken all my decompression plugs out of all my saws except for three. And those three are the 661, the 592, and the 400. You'd ask, well, I, I plug them, the ones I got plugged, I plug them because you can automatically get a little more power out of the saw by plugging the decomp valve, decompression valve, because it's a natural air leak. However, I leave it in on the 400 because that's the one I'm primarily running in the tree, and I want that thing to pull as easy as I can possibly pull it. If you've never, if, if you never, you'll never understand this if you've never hung on a rope or you've been in a basket, you know, working in the air. If you're on a rope, everything's like right here, jammed against your chest the whole time. You know, it's not like you can stand up 
get a good wide stance on you and rip the rip the cord out. You're you know everything's real funky, real tight, compact. So like I left it in the 400 because I want it to be as easy as I can to crank. Sometimes I run a 500 in there, but God though, mighty that thing's hard to crank because it the 500's got some insane compression, and I'm fixing to put the decomp valve back in that thing just where it'll make it easier for me to pull so you know i can take my little old 400 and you know and roll like a sushi chef down through that tree and you know i'm working those funky uh positions and all that stuff like that but i'd been i'd had a 28 inch es light ball ordered forever finally got it in the last week and I stuck it, so that's what's on the 400 now is a 28 now, 91 drive links. I put it on the saw, I figured it would pull the saw down uh, pretty bad, but man, it didn't really phase that saw none. I made some full 28 inch cuts with it yesterday, just kind of running it in, and it didn't, that saw it in back now, man. That, I'm telling you, that 400 is a bad saw. <laughs> that thing's nasty. And I'll tell you too, uh, 400. I, I ran that saw's guts out this past week, too. I'm not sure how many times I cranked it, but it was a bunch. Um, I'm not sure how many hours runtime I've got on that. It's not quite two years. It'll be two years old, middle of this summer. But um, I've got, I should have a good bit of runtime on that thing now. But he, pretty much the, the stuff up in the air that if I'm running a gas saw, that's what you're going to see me run is going to be the 400 uh, simply because of that. There are some drawbacks on it, on the steels, the gas and oil caps on them are, are horrible, 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 horrible. I don't care, they leak, and they just, they leak. They leak all the time. Uh, these folks say, man, I never had no trouble with it. Mm, well, I, you may be one of the lucky ones, but man, they are, uh, every one of mine just leak like crazy. And so, but, uh, I don't really like that and there's a few there's a couple of things on our ergonomics that i don't like but the lightness of the saws is a humongous deal for me so yeah uh me and o'rook we we walked the dog kicked the cat uh, this past week we we rolled and the guys that were with us, I'm telling you, man, I, I can't thank them enough because they really catered uh, to me and to Rook. I mean, like, you know, I could, I could, I would be give out, and when I cut a saw off, one of them would be standing there to grab the saw from me where I didn't have to tote it, or bringing me gas and oil, you know, and that's big, that's huge, man. Even though, like Jack, you know, he said, "Man, I can't, I can't do some of this stuff," you know. But I mean, just bringing stuff to you every now and then, if you need something, man, that's a big freaking deal, you know. So I mean, to do this kind of work, you don't have to be an expert sawyer or or can run a crane or a mini excavator. Gosh, dog, you can, you can walk around and hand out food, man, you know, and, and on the streets and and all that. One other thing I want to talk about: this guy with the Jeep Gladiator. He's at that Jeep Gladiator, and he was, he was helping us, too. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, the Jeep Gladiator, that's a beast of a of a truck thing, whatever you want to call it. That had the Eco Diesel, and, man, we loaded him down several times with logs like that on that thing, and it just, I mean, it didn't phase it. I mean, it was kind of, I was kind of surprised at, uh, at that thing, but... Uh, Anyhow, the, the videos, the storm videos have been really good. And, you know, if you, if you don't, if you don't know, if you've never worked in storm stuff, don't just sell off into it unless you just absolutely got to to save somebody. Work around some guys, watch them cut and watch what they do, if they know what they're doing. Um, but if you watch somebody, these videos will be really, really helpful. Um. So after the Mars video, or yeah, not the Mars, but well, yeah, the last video, I'm gonna talk about the the crane, the tree bag, 
in the in the lift in in likes and stuff about that so it's a heartbreaking situation but it's been a lot of fun to go up there and work uh not cheap for us to go up there and work either and to do what we did and just and, and give it away but i mean if we didn't do it you know who else is going to do it you know what i mean because there's you know there's there's other trade companies that, that have the equipment and the knowledge and the guys to be able to do it, but they may not necessarily be up there at that point in time, you know. So, uh, of course, right now it's a little bit easier because most of the power is still off in the town. And that's one thing you don't, you look around, you look, you see where the freaking power lines are, you know, and everything. And once they get energized, then that's going to make things a lot more complex than what they are now because you don't want a monkey around no power line, man. Power lines are. Power lines are bad, juju, man. Line clearance is a is a very, very important thing, and it does not take much to kill you with a power line. Uh, you can just get a bump from it and fill it, and then five minutes later, you're dead. You know, man, I kill you right then, you know, just so. Appreciate y'all watching, keeping up with what we've done day to day. It's good to see people smile and to be able to help folks, so. We'll catch y'all later. Later, taters.